Are you as an Arsenal fan happy with Arsenal's transfer window? Do you think our squad depth is stronger? Do you believe we've added quality in the pursuit of winning the Premier League title and addressing the golfing class between Arsenal and Manchester City? As I said, it's what's expected to be our third title challenge after the last two years ended in disappointment. Now, to be fair, the club didn't directly come out and say this, but you do look at the mouthpieces and the more informed journalists in usual fashion when one transfer, sorry, when one league campaign ends there's a lot of bullish chat about what we're going to do and not do people and I think every Arsenal fan wanted our club to not necessarily spend 100 million on a player but have a signal of intent that we want to address the golf inequality against Manchester City we did bring in some quality first team additions but in terms of marrying the depth I do believe you know Arsenal fans would be left disappointed, people. You know, we know we've brought in Mikel Marino, Ricardo Calafori, made David Raya's move permanent and also acquired Raheem Sterling on a loan basis. There was a point towards the end of the window in that, obviously, we turned it around and big up Neto for signing for us. The only new player we had was Ricardo Calafori. As you know, we spent around just over 20 odd million on Mikel Moreno. We then spent similar fee where David Ryer is concerned before spending an initial 38.4 million on Ricardo Calafori. This summer, we spent 93.9 million people. I'm sure the higher powers that be at Arsenal will be happy with the net spend and the positive spend Arsenal did. On the face of it, positive bank balance helps us in future windows to come. And we do have a positive balance in that. I do think the sales of Emil Smith Rowe and Eddie and Ketty are probably the best business we did. Maybe could have got some better fees for several young players that departed the football club. Maybe could have not scrambled around where the goalkeeper situation was concerned and while I think Raheem Sterling will be a good bit of business and a good contingency plan Edu said that wasn't on our agenda and obviously the fact that he's 29 he's still got a number of years but doesn't provide longevity so for me it would be described as a mixed bag if I'm honest with you we spent 93.9 million in total which is just slightly less than what we've initially spent as we get better I understand the talent pool finding players that can improve us are slim and we don't necessarily need to have mad money spent windows if that makes sense but isn't it excuse to keep making out that Arsenal have to be a hundred percent convinced on a certain player because although I think the striker market isn't the best, while I don't advocate signing players for the sake of them, if you're not a hundred percent convinced, considering Mikel Arteta and Edu said they had meetings in March and April, considering last January Edu said he's already began his work to the summer. Did we move as proactively as we could? Was it a bit more messy than we would have loved to? Of had it now. Obviously, you had the Copper America, you had the Euros, players that could have been available, plans could have shifted, and likewise, players that weren't available. But you know, you look at the goalkeeper in front. We went around the houses, and we didn't necessarily secure our number one targets. I mean, it'd be naive to assume Arsenal bought Mikel Marino um, and Calafori purely off the Euros. We've heard we've looked at Double M Mikel, you know, Mikel Arteta's namesake for over a year, and similar rhetoric around Calafori. You would imagine, though. Arsenal clearly watched the Euros with a fine eye and that added as further confirmation. Then you look at what you could say is the ever so slightly predictable but yet unpredictable random loan addition of Raheem Sterling, a player that was discarded by Manchester City, has found himself out of the England contentions and is considered damaged goods at Chelsea. Now, when you look at it, Mikel Marino, Califuri, Sterling, they do technically address areas. They provide versatility. You know, Mikel Marino can be an eight and a six. Califori can play centre half as well as left back. Sterling can play all across the front three. And all of them could easily all when fit and when the, the time is right be left hand sided additions to make us left lop hand sided. We all know if we don't do it on the right hand side, we're in issues in that regards. I do think, you know, fans take statements and get excited but when Edu makes several statements about the recruitment about the proactive approach how he reads over 180 pages on single players Mikel Arteta has said time after time we have one of the smallest squads has our squad depth improved for me we've brought in some great additions 
individually and they got, I guess, more players to Arteta to trust with. But it does feel like we've gone 10 steps forward and then 10 steps back. So we're ultimately in the same position, if I'm honest with you, um, really. As I said, the net spend um, for, for us is going to be positive, where you look at PSR and FFP and things of that ilk. I wouldn't say on Arsenal were under immediate danger, but it doesn't help to be proactive and look after that. We had a net spend of anything, some reports say 19 all the way to 22 million quid people. Regarding the academy, where you look at Owen um, Asamota, a young goalkeeper that's not signed the scholarship and went to Aston Villa. Si in similar fashion, Chido Obi Martins, who's expected to play for Manchester United soon. Koza Jubri and Waters, they all left for free. So we have to take that to a tribunal. I'm not necessarily happy with the fee we got for Brook Norton Coffee. I think 3.5 million is, is liberties, considering he's played over 100 times in the championship. But it does go down as 100% profit. And in similar fashion, Charlie Patino. Where I look at it, though, and I'm not going to begrudge the club for not necessarily getting your first choice targets because you know we tried to go over Mudrick and we got Trossard fair to say that worked out better for us in hindsight but I think we found ourselves scrambling over the goalkeeping situation I feel like where you look at the athletic talking about Benjamin Sesco we had an inability to get that so you would argue we failed to get a striker that we wanted we failed to bring in Nico Williams who in reality was probably third choice in the sense of it was probably stay at Bilbao or sign for Barcelona so where did that go where you look at Jokerez and Osimhen, it there wasn't any, any tangible proof that Arsenal were going to move for them beyond fanfare and them being strikers. So I won't get at them for that, but I would hardly say we're a significantly better side. I think the 11s improved the squad and you look at it with the amount of games that we've got and the injuries. I don't think we've helped ourselves personally in that regards people you know the main thing is we, we you know we've addressed all areas and we do have some good additions but we failed to get our first choice targets if I'm honest with you um and I don't think Arteta is happy with the squad depth personally you know big up our Edu and those that be for the contingency plans in place went after several keepers were able to get Neto couldn't bring in a winger got Sterling you know you did get Mikel Marino who was your first target you know, Sesco, Nico Williams, Joan Garcia, these guys did not arrive, but it is what it is. We all know where Arsenal's concerned. There's an overarching strategy um, for, for this summer to raise the level of the squad, to trade in players for superior replacements. Thus, if not necessarily lifting the ceiling, but lifting the floor and ultimately giving Arteta more reliable players to to work with last season the minutes were largely shared with the same old 11 to 14 max trusted players i don't know if we've actually exp um, you know got more in that regards if everyone's fit but i'd love to know you lot's thoughts we can't get away from it people you know sustainability matters a necessary part of us was to sell players and i think in that regards ultimately it's got it done because the bank balance is positive really and truly the decision makers at arsenal never shifted away from the club wanting to be run responsibly and when you look at the last Last two windows, excluding this year, the lavish expenditure had to kind of be um, addressed in that regards, people. And also, you'd imagine Arsenal are also mindful of the increased regulation around spending. The club obviously have a skilled team of lawyers and accountants to help us monitor such. Arsenal's desire to sell this summer was known, people. It's, it's well known that agents were acting as third parties to get our players away. And where you look at a number of our sales, you know, we haven't done it all because nobody's done it all, but I think we've done okay in that regards, you know. The, the several players that had no future here, you know, the vast majority have gone of course you've got a couple hanging around the club people in my opinion the club clearly wanted to balance the books but this could have but this could have and should have been a season, in my opinion, of signaling intent. I rate not signing players for the sake of it, but is that really an excuse where it's evident the areas Arsenal need to improve? And it does wonder how close, but yet how far are we from having the squad that we need? You know, how close are we to exhausting our options? Of course, don't get it twisted. We need to improve the existing players and marry them with some quality. For me personally, I'm happy with Sterling, but I would have loved the more long-term modelling where versatile attack is concerned. I would have loved enough a midfielder even though I think in addition to what we have already as well as Moreno that was probably naive and they did you know David Raya was always going to be made permanent Raheem Sterling's here and I'm excited about Califori signing so ultimately I would give the window a six out of ten I think it's a mixed bag for me I think majorly you know we've looked after finances and got some important fees and got a positive net spend not that you can bring profit or net spend off the bench to help with our debt for in the games I do think technically we've addressed all the areas but you are wanting 
wanting more. It feels like we've done five good things and 10 bad things and you're left wanting more. I wouldn't say any Arsenal fan is 100% convinced negatively or positively. But I would love to know you lot's thoughts on the window as a whole. Is it one where you look at Edu with an enhanced reputation? Do you think we have the squad that we need at our disposal? I would give it a 6 out of 10, but I'd love to know you lot's thoughts. On that note, smash the like button, comment and subscribe. Peace.